So, past term emission tomography, uh, what are the pros and cons or merits and limitations? So, pros is in imaging, yes, metabolism of specific bioactive molecules such as a neurotransmitter. We can, uh, for example, uh, we can study relative metabolism of serotonin in human brain by use of radioactive ligand that binds to serotonin receptors that we can measure those relative metabolism. On the other hand, the limitation of PET compared with, let's say, another functional imaging modality such as functional MRI, which we will discuss uh, next time, is the, uh, it may have the same temporal resolution, uh, but it has a low spatial resolution of several millimeters. And PET, the problem is it doesn't provide anatomical data so that we often combine PET with a, a CT or MRI uh, for um, uh, overlaying uh, anatomic uh, uh, information as well. However, PET has a pretty high cost due to use of radioactive isotope um, and the most of the PET isotopes must be synthesized on site using cyclotron device, which itself is a big expensive equipment. And the reason is it's a short-lived uh, isotope, so the half-life is usually very short. And on the other, for example, a uh, uh, popular uh, PET radioisotope is called uh, uh, glucose analog which is called F18, FDG, fluoride, uh, uh, the glucose, it has a half-life of about over two hours. So uh, that is required to inject into the subject before taking image. So remember, for example, our institute has a micro pen, but we don't have a cyclotron. In that case, we have a little limited use of micro pen because in the local hospital, there's a cyclotron, we actually order it, there's a quick service delivering it within several tens of minutes, then we have a, a only limited time interval to image uh, for uh, run the pad. So that is a kind of a limitation. But however, it gives a, a great uh, metabolic uh, information. So, uh, in comparison with the PET, I want to go back to SPECT because it's uh, a cheaper alternative to PET. And in the United States alone, almost 75% of nuclear medicine imaging is done by SPECT, not the PET, because PET's more expensive. So, a um, SPECT, uh, I'll give you one example of heart imaging under stress and rest condition. And technetium 99 base of spec and F18 base of PET, you can see the image quality different. So similarities, both are functional images. Uh, it can measure in the brain, for example, neural activity. And both do not give a very good structural data. And radioactive probe is injected or inhaled into the circulatory system. And that the probe has to bind to, for example, a red blood cell to be carried throughout body for, especially for blood flow case, detecting increased in neural metabolism from radioactive signals. And both, um, uh, uh, not both, SPECT uses a detector with a, yes, gamma camera. Um, so here I have a little bit of a table comparison. SPECT emits gamma radiation by PET that radioisotope emits positron force and then that converts into uh, the opposing pair of a gamma rays. And in terms of resolution, SPECT has a little higher resolution and um, uh, SPECT uses long-lived radioisotope which can be cheaply uh, manufactured or made, while PET case we have a limited half-life of radio pharmaceuticals. So difference of PET is not as, the SPECT is not as costly by using cheaper radio isotope that do not require on-site cyclotron because cyclotron is a big equipment. So SPECT detects immediate gamma rays using gamma camera directly. 
So that's why it's a single photon emission CT because it's one single uh, gamma ray. While PET traces emit what? A positron, which after annihilation with an electron inside tissue, uh, that result in two opposing gamma rays, which energy in fact is about 511 kilo electron volt each. So this is an example of spect. Okay, uh, next time we'll discuss about magnetic resonance imaging. Thank you for your attention.